Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video and in this one we're going to be doing something that a lot of you guys have asked me about. I get tons upon tons of requests to build traps, armories and weapons in Minecraft. People want them all the time, so I thought I would do one video showcasing a whole bunch of different designs for each of those different categories. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly through all of the designs and then at the end of the video I'm going to be showing you how to build each and every one of them. I think it's going to be fairly interesting, so let's crack on. So design number one is this little thing right here. If we head down to the bottom and flick this lever, you can see that all of these pistons will retract and we now have access to chests. We've got enchanting tables, we've got crafting benches, we have furnaces down at the bottom, we've got a few anvils in the corners. Basically, we have everything that you could possibly want in an armory and this thing is absolutely tiny. Now, one thing that I will say about this video is I'm just going to be demonstrating how to build the actual contraptions, not the inputs. If you want some form of hidden input device like a redstone torch key or like a hose switch or something like that, I've done a whole bunch of those videos and I'll put links to those down in the description. When we flick this lever right here, you can see all of the blocks pop back up, everything is hidden away and your armory is completely concealed. So the other day on Hermitcraft, I was experimenting with the new concrete blocks and I was trying my best to make artworks by balancing them on TNT, then exploding them upwards into the water. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but I did come up with this little situation right here. Now, here we have a fence post and we've got some lava on top and then we have some of the concrete powder that hasn't quite landed. It's still an entity. It's just half a block above the fence post. Now, what that means is, is it's completely level with these half slabs right here. Yes, it does look a little bit strange, and occasionally you do get lava particles flying out, but any normal player will walk over this and land straight in the lava. That one's got to be a little bit deadly. The whole point of this TNT camera right here is that it is incredibly easy and fast to build. When you're building weapons, you don't want to be standing around for ages out in the open constructing something massive and complicated, because then the chances are, someone is just going to come along and kill you. You want something that is extremely quick to build. So I would say you could probably construct this thing right here in around about 20 seconds, maybe 15 seconds if you're fast enough. And as you can see, it's very powerful. You can just place in the TNT, hit the button, and then the TNT gets launched off into the distance, ready to blow up one of your friend's builds or kill off all of the enemies that you're taking on. This one is dead simple. Now this little fella right here is one of the slightly more complicated designs of the bunch, but I would say it's probably one of the coolest. Now this is the drop down armor equipping station and this design is the smallest one that I have ever come up with. It's just five blocks long and only three blocks wide. And as you can see, when we stand on top of this block right here, if we pop into F5 mode, you can see I'm not wearing any armor right now. When we hit this button, we should drop down and then we should have all of our armor placed on us and then we pop back onto the surface. Now this is honestly one of my favorite redstone contraptions. I don't care how complicated it is to create because I just think it's amazing. From one of the most complicated designs through to arguably one of the simplest. Here we have some redstone dust, a block, and a redstone torch powering this piston. That's pretty much the whole tutorial done. And as you can see, we've got ourselves an iron door. Now you can find plenty of these inside your friend's bases. If it's not an iron door, then it could be some form of piston door or wooden door, just some form of door or some form of redstone activated device. And if you walk over this bridge plate, you can see that the block is removed and you fall right the way through the hole before you've even been able to process exactly what has happened. Now this is going to catch out a large number of people, so I would suggest building this for people that you really dislike on the server. <laughs> for those of you who have watched my videos before, this build right here is going to look fairly familiar because I have used it in a large number of my Redstone Let's Build videos as well as doing it on Hermitcraft and everything like that because it simply is one of my favorite redstone circuits. If we walk around the back and flick this lever, you can see our slime blocks drop down and we have got access to a whole ton of chests and a whole ton of furnaces as well. Now, if you sat there thinking that redstone right there looks very similar to this redstone over here, you would be right in saying that. In fact, it is exactly the same. That is the wonder of slime blocks is that they're pretty versatile when it comes to double piston extenders. Just flick the lever, both of these sticky pistons drop down. We flick the lever again, both of them extend. It's perfect. Now in this one here, you may notice that I have placed stone behind our little archway right here. And that is because stone is incredibly good at hiding away string. I mean, if you didn't see the hitbox right there, just really look for it. If you were walking past, you wouldn't notice. Okay, you can say that you're eagle eye and you'd be able to spot this sort of thing, but that simply isn't the case. You wouldn't be able to see that string right there. And if you walk over it, obviously, you drop down through a piston trapdoor and probably fall to your death. 
Lava, maybe a falling trap that's going to take all of your items into hoppers and put them into chests. Yeah, if you fall into this thing, it's pretty bad news. But if you've created this thing, then congratulations, because it's an awesome piston trap. The idea behind this weapon is it is useful for situations where you're sort of on the back foot a little bit. Perhaps a player comes up to you and they've got ridiculous armor and they've got a really good sword and everything like that and you're running away, okay? You've decided, you know what, I can't take this person on. I'm getting out of here. Now this is where this thing comes in because you're running along like this, the person is right behind you, you jump down to the bottom, the piston will close up behind you to cover you away from this. But now what's happening is, is that there are hundreds upon hundreds of arrows being shot directly straight upwards. Now this means that if the player was to try and follow you down here, well, as you can see... <laughs> oh my word! As you can see, <laughs> they would have been, quite frankly, obliterated by every single arrow under the sun. Now, the chances are they would either run away and stay away from this place because clearly you are geared to the nines, or alternatively, they'd try their best to chase you in there and probably be destroyed by, as you just saw there, about a billion arrows. Now, I have to say, I didn't actually test out this contraption before I built it, and I am very, very proud. <laughs> I'm very proud of its firepower. Good grief. So, those are all the designs that I have to show you for today's video. Obviously, I have built about a billion different traps, weapons, and armories on my channel before previously. That I'll also put link down in the description if you do want to check them out for yourselves. But now, I am going to show you how to build these things. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, quite a few of them really are quite simple, so they won't take too long. But a handful of them are just a tiny bit more complicated, so they will need just a little bit more explanation. So, for design number one, what I'm going to do is clear out all of the stuff that we have in the armory just to make things a little bit more visible, and you will soon realize that this design right here is very, very simple indeed. All we have is a two by two area of slime blocks, then a two by two area of blocks on top of it, and then two sticky pistons facing upwards just like this, with a repeater set to three ticks, connected up with a redstone line, repeater set to one tick, and then an immovable object on that block right there. And that is everything completed. There is your double piston extender. That is pushing up the two by two space. So I don't think I need a block by block tutorial for this one. For this design, you wanna start things off by constructing something a little bit like this. We've got four blocks going around the outside like this. They don't have to be glass, but I personally like the way the glass looks. And then we have got a fence post down at the bottom there, leaving one block of space, and then we have got half slabs on the top. Now the reason that it has to be half slabs is because the concrete is actually going to land level with the half slabs. So then in this block right here, we need to place in some lava, then we want to go up to the top, just chuck in a block up there, place in your concrete, it will drop down, and there we go. We have created an awesome, completely concealed trap. This TNT cannon is fairly self-explanatory. That block down at the bottom there doesn't actually have to be immovable. This block right here does, that's where you place the TNT and you hit this button and that will fire everything. Now both of the pistons are sticky and as I say, obsidian in the center, that's where you place the button. Repeater is set to one tick. I mean, once again, no block by block tutorial needed for that. This one, however, this one is a tiny bit more complicated. So first things first, you need to create a three by five area. Then we're going to have a block with a redstone torch like that. We're going to have a block there and a block there with redstone dust just in like this. Then you want some redstone there and a repeater set to four ticks, which is going to be running out into this block. Then you want a sticky piston facing upwards and then another sticky piston right there with a block on its face, which is going to create a double piston extender. And you want a repeater running into that sticky piston and that's going to be set to two ticks. Now that right there is the double piston extender pretty much completed. We have got the full extension. Now what we have to do is the retraction and the way that we do that is by creating a falling edge monostable circuit facing in this direction right here with an item on the inside of that dropper. Then you wanna have a comparator running out from that one with a block up like this, a block right here with redstone dust there, and then a repeater running straight into that piston arm right there. So if we place in a wooden button down at the bottom here, we should see that we get the double retraction and then also the double extension. That is brilliant. Now, all we have to do is go up to the top like this and we're going to place in all of the dispensers 
going around our piston arm like this. So that area there is going to be flush with our floor, which means that we need dispensers in there. We need a dispenser right there, and also a dispenser in the final location, which is going to be over here, which can be a little bit of a pain to place, but just chuck it in like that. Then to power all of our dispensers, we just place in a redstone torch and then a block and then two redstone torches on either side just like this and then two repeaters set to three ticks on either side just like that with redstone dust out the back right here on this side, sorry. Ooh, the new inventories are really, really frustrating. But that should be everything completed. So now you just want to place one piece of armor in each one of these dispensers. So that could, for example, be the helmets. You can fill that in with helmets. And that one can be chest plates. That one can be leggings. And this one can be for your boots. For these three designs, once again, don't really think that they need a block by block tutorial. For this one, what we have to do is place redstone underneath the pressure plate, then a block, and then a redstone torch with a sticky piston facing across, running into that block, and that will do everything that you need it to. So there we go. That design is functional. In fact, if you wanted to, you didn't even need to have the door there. You could just have a pressure plate and then a drop down thing. I'm sure that would still catch out a handful of players. Now this one, once again, fairly self-explanatory. Yep. You guys get the idea, and this one is exactly the same as design number one, except instead of creating a 2x2 two two area horizontally, you create the 2x2 two two area vertically, and that becomes a lot more obvious when you don't have all of this junk kicking around. So there we go. That is the full design, and as you can see, works perfectly. This design is, I would say, just about simple enough to not require a block-by-block -block tutorial once again. So we've got the trip wire right there, which goes across by three blocks and we've got the tripwire hooks on either end. They power the redstone, which unpowers our redstone torch, which then unpowers this sticky piston right here, which then unpowers these sticky pistons, bringing back both of those blocks. Now this is the piston formation. So we've got two sticky pistons and a sticky piston facing upwards. And then as I say, repeater set to two ticks, running into that block right there. Really, really simple stuff, but it's a powerful trap once again. Now let's move on to the monster. Yeah, I think this probably requires a tutorial. So for this one, you want to get things started with a 5x6 area, and this block right here is the block that we're going to be landing on. So you want to place a pressure plate on top of that one. Then you want some redstone torches just making their way up like this with a block on top of that, and then a sticky piston facing across right there with a block on top, which is going to protect us from all of the crazy things that go on above that sticky piston, basically. So then we're going to create a 2x2 two two area right here with a comparator, then redstone running around like that with redstone dust at the end to create a comparator clock. And then we need blocks going up like this and across on both sides like a pair of arms with redstone going up like that and repeaters running into these blocks which will have blocks up like this and then a block there, block up like this, redstone dust on both of those peaks with a repeater in between just like that. Then you want to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side, so redstone dust there, and then a repeater, and then a block with redstone dust once again. Now it is time to start placing in all of the dispensers. So we're going to have dispensers going around just like this, and we want them to make their way around that entire whole area there, and inside all of those, you can place any arrows that you want. I personally quite like the thought of potion arrows. But then we're going to cover up all of these blocks and you can drop this down as far as you like. I personally would almost suggest placing it in like this. So if the player falls in, they are going to get obliterated by arrows so fast that they won't be able to mine any of the blocks to get out and they will probably die up at the top there. But there we go. That is everything completed. If we pop down to the bottom, as you can hear, it is working just as well as it did before. <laughs> that is a ridiculous ridiculous contraption. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.